Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technology. I'm your host, Orst, and today we are covering creating APIs in Postman. Prior to this video, we had looked at uh, XML scripting in Postman. So this was involving the Cheerio.js API. Uh, what this does is it allows us to use a jQuery-like syntax to parse, uh, edit, and render XML. So this is really useful for Sulp or SAML type services where you need to keep native XML. Uh, you can find that video uh, above me. Additionally, we have, uh, if you're just getting started in advanced type concepts with Postman, I would recommend beginning from this series. You can find that up above me. And then lastly, if you uh, haven't had much experience with Postman at all, I'd recommend the intro series. Again, you can find that above me. So what are APIs in Postman, or what is this creating APIs in Postman? Well, what this is, is it combines all the best features of Postman. So that would be including uh, importing uh, schemas using uh, OpenAPI, RAML, or GraphQL. We have creating collections for them, so documentation collections, um, test collections, uh, integration, etc. cetera. Um, we have mock servers where we could create in here, and then we have uh, monitors as well. So what this does is it's like a managerial plane or a managerial view of all of those concepts or tools that encompass your API. So uh, all of that is uh, versioned under a, a version tag. So we'd include version control in here. So it really gives us one way to view all of the things that relate to our API uh, that we're creating in, in Postman, or let's say creating outside of Postman, but need a way to manage it and monitor it. So. I don't really like the name that they have here. It just says APIs. I like to think of it as like an API studio. This is where I get to lay out my API. I get to write it out. You can think of it as like a big uh, drawing board. And you get to put things in here that allow you to define it and then all the way to the end to uh, mocking it and monitoring it and just one whole big view. So as you can see, I already have uh, a, an API here that I created. However, uh, I'm going to create another one for you after we go through uh, these concepts here. So first we have the define section. Um, I'm going to switch back to my uh, draft version that I have and then show you what I've created thus far. So in here, I just honestly, I ripped the uh, open API schema from uh, one of the open API's uh, GitHub's or they're, they're just, uh, I just took it because I, I don't really write open API that much, but um, I could figure it out. I just haven't taken the time to do that. But here, this is a open API schema in 3.0. And all I did in here was copy and paste it in. And once I'd done that and saved it, uh, I was able to get a uh, generated collection uh, and view a change log for here as well. So just in case I change anything. Uh, for the sake of this video, I did make a couple changes in here uh, from the normal thing uh, or the normal one I pulled from uh, GitHub. I added a query parameters and that just allows me to change the response that I get in the mock server depending on the query parameters. And so I recommend um, getting familiar with open API spec or GraphQL or RAML or uh, any API schema that you're importing into here. But for now, this video is not gonna cover that. So the next section we have develop. Here we can create our mock servers as I noted or uh, add them. So if you already had an existing one, you can add it. Here we can add our documentation, which is just a collection that you've made specifically for public facing documentation. And lastly, here we have an environment. So these are any of the environments that we have relating to our API we can put in here. Here we have our, our test suites. So um, what our test suite is here is basically any type of test that we're doing, uh, any generic uh, tests, any standardized tests that we have, just like the, the, the bare minimum tests, you can maybe call them. We could put test suites in here or anything that doesn't involve, in, involve or fall into integration tests or contract tests. So now getting onto integration tests, integration tests are just tests where we combine two different systems and we test them together. So for example, if our API has to call another API, uh, that's uh, somewhere where we can do an integration test to be sure that they they merge together well and we get the response that we like. Uh, it doesn't have to be just another API. It could be uh, any other two different systems interacting. Um, and that's what I would put in here for our integration test. We would create a collection around that and create a, a test script in there and then throw it into here for uh, managerial purposes. 
Contract tests are what I consider the most bare minimum tests. So what this means is that a, I am testing against the, the contract or the schema that I define. So for example, in our define section, we have our open API schema that we wrote or that I copied in. A contract test would basically go against that, uh, go against the API that I'm calling and make sure it is being returned in the proper format. An example of this would be if I have uh, JSON as my as my return type in in the Open API schema, and I'm returning XML for some reason. That's failing my contract test because I said I would return JSON, but I don't. I return XML. So contract test just basically test the schema of of your API. Lastly, we have the observe section. So what the observe section is, is it looks at monitors. And here we can just create a monitor and create them for any of our APIs uh, or collections, excuse me, that we've uh, created. And so that's really the gist of it all that we have here. Um, the beautiful part at the end, like I mentioned, is we get to tag this with different uh, version tags. So let's say you're on version 0 0.5 of your API. You can create a tag here um, called I'll show you. So if I click show all versions, we create another version. We can create a tag in there that allows us to tag that API with that version number. And then any collections that we have, any monitors that we have, any mock servers that we have, and I believe even uh, well, these collections, monitors, and mock servers that we have can all be defined under this tag. So what's nice about that is we get to see the evolution of our API change over time and manage those. So let's say you move on to version 1.0. You can create new collections to match that version, new monitors to match that version, and new mocks. Obviously, ideally, you'd probably remove the old monitor because at that point, the API wouldn't be the same as it was before from 0 0.5 to, to 1.0. But this allows us to, to do that change management in here. And so what we're going to do now is go ahead and recreate this same example. Oh, and before I forget, here we have some few other options. We have a refresh, you know, things change within our collection monitors or box. We can click refresh to refresh this a a API view. Our reports, and this is for uh, how things run and um, I think executions. I'm not entirely too sure of what this all consists of, but this is an enterprise grade feature. So you have to have the enterprise license in order to see that. Comments here are this, the general comments, you know, that you can. Uh, that developers can write through as they're making changes in the API. Share button in here is sharing it to any workspace that we have and uh, the type of workspace, um, just the same share feature we've seen before. And then we have the ellipses here, which we could change our roles. So if this was a team a workspace, I could change who can view this API. I could rename it, remove it from workspace, and also delete it. So very generic. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new API. And here I'm going to call this YouTube 2. And then now it asks us to add our schema. So here I'll just do create new. I'm going to go ahead and go to this one, copy it all through, and paste it in here. Go ahead and save that. Uh, first, I should put YAML in here and then click save. So now that it matches what we're expecting to see. So here, now I have the option to generate collection, which I will, and I will call this, I'll call it API Studio. And here, I'm gonna add it as a documentation. In general, I would probably create this one as a documentation if I'm importing it or generating it from uh, API, open API schema. So click here and generate collection. And then now we'll have a new collection, which has API Studio. So moving on, we'll go to develop. And here we can add a mock server. And I'll do in this case, create a new mock server. We're going to do use existing collection. And here we're going to use API Studio. We'll select it. And we'll call this API Studio. And now if we had a different version tag, we would do that. However, we don't have any version tags now. So we'll just go ahead and create it. And now we have a mock server for that. 
Next, moving on, you see we've already created that collection and added in here. So we already have a documentation. And since we already have another in, uh, a, an environment, I will add just YouTube tests in here as an environment and go ahead and do that. So as you notice, many of these things are just managerial. Like I've said, they just add them. We don't really have many abilities in how we can execute things in here, but they're just uh, for, a, for the sake of this, uh, a, a way to see everything in one spot. So next we'll move on to tests. I'm just gonna repeat what I've done in the prior one, which is add the same API Studio collection in here. And so obviously what we would do is create different collections uh, to suit these features or tests that we're looking for. And then the last page we have our observe. So I'll go ahead and add a monitor for that. And I'll create a new monitor from API Studio. And so we'll move on and we'll call this API Studio. We're gonna keep it the current version tag. We'll have a YouTube, well, actually we'll do no environment in this case, but if we specify the environment variable, we would put in there. And we're gonna have Okay, let's see, we have weekly at the highest, so we'll just say every Sunday. So we're not gonna have this run. And we'll go ahead and create our monitor. In this case, it would kind of be a little redundant, especially having a mock server. We're gonna have a, a monitor to hit our mock server, which really wouldn't monitor anything, but just for the sake of example, I'm showing this. And so that's really it. That's really what we have the ability to do in here. Now on the last point, we will go ahead and show the example with versioning. So I'm gonna here, we have show all vers versions and I'm gonna create 1.0. And then here in 1.0, I can, or when I'm creating a new version, I can actually choose which elements to carry over if I want. So I can carry over mock servers, documentation, test suites, etc. So for now, I'm gonna carry over everything except the monitor. So let's see. So if I did carry over nothing, it would, wouldn't choose anything, but if I carry over things from draft, we can go ahead and choose which ones that we want. So let's say things that may have not changed between versions. So I can create a new version and we'll see, we have all this information here. We have develop here, test, and observe. We do not have a monitor. So for the sake of example as well, we're going to go ahead and delete a test suite here. And we're going to add a test suite, let's say one of these other collections, we'll call it Postman Echo. So in here, if I click the right hand button, I see the change log, see how we have add version tag. I can go ahead in here and add a version tag for YouTube 2 and version 1.0. And we'll add this to our, I believe our first was the test suite. So go ahead and click add version tag. And now what we'll notice is that within here, we have Postman Echo. So if we created a version 1.0 or 2.0 of a collection, um, or let alone we have edits within that collection that we can tag we can go ahead and do that and add that functionality in right over here. So it's very simple. And I would say that really covers uh, the features that we have available here within a Postman's API Studio. In the next video, we're gonna go ahead and look at a visualizer. So this is a new feature, another beta feature in Postman as well, that allows us to render and view uh, HTML pages within Postman. So this allows us to test our APIs in a more visual format where we get to see, hey, am I, am I returning the right presentation? Generally with an API, they don't always return uh, HTML. Um, that's kind of more of just web backend calls to render data. However, if our APIs are injecting data into those uh, HTML pages, that's one way where we can really do that, that testing, which uh, makes a visualizer a good use case. So I hope you like this video. Um, 
please subscribe to my channel uh, if you like this type of content and give this a thumbs up if uh, it really helped you. Additionally, click the bell for notifications so you don't miss another video. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next video with API Visualizer.